Acts the fifth chapter, and pending any more disco lights, we'll try to get through the rest of this. Um, Acts the fifth chapter, I think we're going to start, I'll just give a review of, uh, we'll start around the, the 29th verse, and we'll see if we can continue forward. We left off where Peter and the other apostles were confronted by the, the Sadducees and, and, and the Sanhedrin council uh, concerning the fact that uh, they had escaped from prison. Actually, it was an angel of the Lord that had released them from prison, and they were back preaching in the synagogues and the temples and things of that nature. They were asked to come back uh, to, to meet with uh, the quote-unquote high priest in, in the council. And so this is uh, verse 29, Acts the 5th chapter, the 29th verse. We'll give a recap of what Peter shared with them. It said in verse uh, uh, Acts 5.29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We gave Galatians 1.10 as background text for that. Uh, verse 30, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. All right. And then in verse 31 it says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. And in verse 33, it said, When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. All right, And of course, we know the reason why, because when they give the, the testimony of the gospel, um, they're actually also saying that this, this council, this senate, are, they're guilty of killing Jesus. They, they were responsible for Jesus' death. And <clears throat> Peter says that they, they slew and they hung him on a tree. And um, there's some background to this uh, in Deuteronomy. For It was one thing for a man to be stoned to death. Yeah. All right? But it was another thing if a man was, was slain by hanging, hanging on a tree then that was an even more um, shameful way of capital punishment. So Peter was letting them know, not only did you kill the Messiah, you killed him and you shamed him in, in, in death. All right? Um, because uh, well, if you hold your place here, I think it's uh, Galatians 3.13. If you turn to your right, you got... Um, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then you get into Galatians. I think it's Galatians 3.13 uh, mentions this, yes. Uh, Galatians 3.13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Mm. All right, and that's actually a reference back to Deuteronomy 12, uh, excuse me, Deuteronomy 21.23. As an Old Testament verse that talks about the difference of being stoned versus being hung on a tree. And so whoever is hung on a tree, not only do they die a, a painful death, they are accursed. All right. And when we're talking about a tree, we're talking about the cross, which is made from wood, which comes from a tree. All right. All right. But um, yes. <laughs> OK. But uh, Jesus was not only. Uh, put to death, but he was, he was cursed, if you will, mm. all right, when he was put to death. And so that made it even worse. And so that's the point that they're trying to bring out here, going back to Acts, the fifth chapter and the 30th verse, talking about he, you not only slew him, but you hanged him on a tree, and anyone who's hung, who's hung on a tree is cursed, all right? So uh, verse 33, they said when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them because no one wants to be ever told that they're wrong about yeah. something, right? And so if you, if you ever tell someone, hey, that's not right, uh, unless that person has a repentant heart and they say, yeah, you're right, I shouldn't have done that, I, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times they will seek to quiet you. Yeah. They will seek to, to put you to silence yeah. because they don't want to be told that they're wrong, all right? And so that's why they sought to slay these men because they were cut to the heart. There, there was nothing wrong with what they said. Everything that they said was true. All right? Any questions or comments there before we move on to verse 34? I believe we're going to actually get through this chapter today. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I always kind of wondered, they say, 
hanging on a tree. I wonder if if they had a tree available, they'd actually nail them on a tree, but in lack of a tree being available, they'd use a cross. You ever hear anything like about that? Maybe? A tree wouldn't be the same effect as a cross because you're doing well, that. You could on yeah, purpose too. You, know, you could do a pretty good job with it the tree. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying the significance of using a cross opposed to just a tree. In terms of uh, yeah, yeah, help help me out here. I'm I'm losing the the, well, a cross the idea. Move around the tree is going to stay where it's planted. <laughs> You well, I mean, you can cut the tree down and move it, right? So, that's but, <laughs> but, but, but that's not the same as, as just putting someone on a tree. I see what you're saying. Or like if they cut down a small tree and leave two branches on it, that would, I'm just, I just wonder where they got that expression from. Well, I mean, it, it, it actually comes from, yeah, uh, it, it, would, it would require a little more further study, but uh, Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, gives a little, well, it, it mentions it, but I don't think it goes into a lot of detail about it. What if it, it was just brain, like thick branches of the tree, but it was like pieces of finely cut wood, like you see in the pictures and stuff? You know, it was like I don't know. You just wonder what it was really like. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I would have to do some uh, uh, research on that, or, or ask uh, Brother White or Brother Marco mm -hmm. get a little more details on yeah. on that. That's just one of the things I've always been kind of curious about. Yeah. Okay, but the, yeah, the question being when you're talking about hanging on a tree or hanging on a cross or whatever, what's, you know, the, the differences, if any, of, of those where, things? Where did, the expression, where did the expression come from and all of that? So, Most of them came from somewhere. Yes, yes, so I, I'll have to uh, ask some, a little more, some more been, questions I've about that. It, yes, yes. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll have to check on that, but that's a great question. Um, if we go a little further here, in verse 34, it says, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, uh, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to be put the apostles forth a little space. Now, the thing that's special about Gamaliel, outside the fact that he's a Pharisee, Gamaliel was also the teacher of Paul. Before Paul got saved, Gamaliel was the guy who taught Paul pretty much everything that he knows, okay? And so uh, this guy is a very learned professor. And the reason that we know that Gamaliel and Paul had a relationship is because in Acts, the 22nd chapter, if you can just flip forward a couple of pages to your right, Acts, the 27th chapter, in the third verse, when Paul is speaking, Acts 22 and 3, Acts 22 and 3, it says, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in uh, Cilicia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. This is Paul talking. So Paul tells us right here that Gamaliel is this one who taught him. And another passage, Paul says that he's a Pharisee of Pharisees. He said his father was a Pharisee and that he is a Pharisee. I have to go back and find that particular passage. It might be in Philippians, but I have to go back and check. But uh, Paul was a Pharisee. He was taught by this Pharisee, Gamaliel. We can go back to Acts, the fifth chapter, 34th verse. And everyone had respect for Gamaliel because he was a professor of the law and he was a very learned or educated man. Now what's interesting to me about this is that they're going to uh, give Gamaliel an opportunity to speak before the Senate, but Gamaliel is a Pharisee, but the people who brought in the apostles are Sadducees. And they don't believe the same thing. If you go back to the uh, 17th verse of Acts 5, you'll see that we're dealing with Sadducees here. Not Pharisees. The Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. They do not believe in angels. The Pharisees confess both. All right? So <laughs> it's interesting that they're giving credence to this Pharisee because this Pharisee doesn't believe the same as, as, as he does. All right? But when I look at this, I, I, I really see this being an issue of two different parties and then the Christians are, are being the ones who are suffering as a result of those two different parties. And uh, I see that really just kind of being the same today when you look at the two political, major political parties that we have today. We have the Democrats and we have the Republicans. 
but you know, we as taxpayers, we <laughs> we get the short end of the stick, all right. And, and, and then we as as Christians really get the short end of the stick, even though they profess different things. They, you know, they both. Um, um, it's not a priority for either. Yeah, it, neither priority of either party is to to do um, to do the things that God would have them to do. All right. And the reason I can say that and it not be an opinion is because um, if they were wanting to do something about abortion, they would have already started that process. If they had wanted to do something to stop same-sex marriage, they would have already started that process. There's a lot of talk about it, but there's nothing that's ever done. Because not all of them, there are many that are honest on both sides, but many of them are just there to line their own pockets and to uh, make money off the system. As a matter of fact, there's a, a congressman out of Ohio who recently retired, and he's making $86,000 a year in retirement. That's not including other sources of revenue. That's just his retirement package, $86,000 a year. And he doesn't have to worry about insurance. Right? So <laughs> a, lot, a lot of these, a lot of these, these people, um, you have one on one side, you have one on the other side, but then you, as the Christian, your interests are not being being met. All right. So I don't want to go too much too far down that rabbit hole, other than to say that uh, we, as born again believers, our job is to do the same thing that Jesus did. Jesus had an opportunity to go against the government. Jesus could have gone to the to the Romans and said, "Jewish people demand rights," because you know at the time the Roman Empire ruled over Israel. Mm-hmm. Correct. Because it was actually the Romans who crucified Jesus, but it was at the direction of the Jewish people. Right. All right? But the Romans were in charge. But Jesus did not go to the Roman government and say, we demanded our rights. What Jesus did was he reached hearts one person at a time. Mm-hmm. We have gospel that tells us that there were Roman centurions who believed and trusted in Jesus. Mm-hmm. One Roman centurion, and this is a guy who would be a commander over an army of a 100 even came to Jesus and said, hey, I I have a a son who is sick or I have a man who is sick. Lord, I know you can heal him. And Jesus said, okay, I'll come with you. He says, no. I said, I just, the Roman centurion said, I have enough faith that if you just speak the word, Jesus, my, I can't remember if it was his son or one of his men. It was a servant or someone. I said, if you just speak the word, Jesus, that, that person will be healed. All right. So Jesus was reaching individuals, was, was not, he didn't reach he didn't try to fix the government. He just tried to reach people one person at a time. All right? And that's what we should do. We should be out knocking doors or witnessing to others. And by being a witness and winning people one person at a time, then once you win that person over a period of time, those people can a- a- affect greater things. Does that make sense? All right? So we need to model ourselves after what Jesus did. Because Jesus didn't try to overthrow the government, even though he could have. But he said, I'm just going to reach individuals once at a, one, one person at a time, and that's what he did. All right? So I didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, it's just interesting here that the Sadducees are going to give voice to the Pharisee, even though they don't believe the same thing, but they're both against the Christians at the end of the day. All right? Going back to verse 35, Acts 5:35, And it says, And he said unto them, this is Gamaliel talking, he said, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if the counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. So what is Gamaliel saying right here? Gamaliel, he, he's using a little history right here. He says that once upon a time, there was this man named Thutis. And he got together, he, he boasted himself to be some great leader, some great messiah. He got together about 400 men, but they were all slain and they were scattered abroad. And, and his, Thutis' movement went nowhere. 
according to verse 36, as Gamaliel's giving this talk. Then he said, after that rose up a, a man, Judas of Galilee. Now, this is not uh, Judas of the Judas the Apostle or Judas the half brother of Jesus or Judas Iscariot. This is a totally different Judas. Judas was a very common name back during this time. And if this is the Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, all right? That's generally a reference to uh, the Romans um, performing a census or um, the people would have to come come to town in order to be taxed and, and, all, of, and all of that. Uh, the second chapter of Luke talks about the days of the taxing. The reason that Joseph and Mary had to come to Jerusalem was they had to be part of the taxing, part of a, a census that was being taken by the Romans. Okay, They were not in their homeland when Jesus was born. Okay, they, they, they were someplace else, but they came there because of the taxing. Anyway, so there's this other man named Judas who tried to, to get a bunch of people together, and even he perished as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And so what is he saying here in verse 38? He's saying, look, just like these guys, Thutis and Judas, they tried to have their own movements, but because it wasn't of God, I know that sounds funny, Thutis and Judas, uh, because it wasn't of God, it failed. He said, that's going to be the same thing that's going to happen to Peter and these apostles. If what they're doing is not of God, don't you guys worry about it. It's going to fail just like it did for Thutis and Judas. All right. And so that's what Gamaliel is saying right here. And what he's saying, even though Gamaliel doesn't believe that Paul and the apostles are are truly uh, preaching the gospel, because Gamaliel at this time, he's a Pharisee. And while some Pharisees did believe during the, the time of Jesus, this particular Pharisee, Gamaliel, he doesn't believe that Jesus is the risen son of God. He's just saying, hey, if they're preaching the truth, if God's with them, there's nothing we can do about it anyway. Mm, yeah. All right. That's what Gamaliel is saying. So here, even though he doesn't believe himself, he's actually preaching a bit of truth here. Because if God be before you, who can be against you? Yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Right. So he's actually preaching a, a bit of pr- truth here, even though he doesn't believe it himself. And so um, do we have any questions before we go to verse 40? I just yes. You know, he, he probably was pretty familiar with Paul. And he probably, uh, probably really got his attention that Paul was converted a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. I think secular history talks about Gabilio some more. We don't know what ultimately happens to him. I don't know how he ultimately died or anything of that nature. Oh, which reminds me, I made a mistake last Sunday. Um, I made a mention that Andrew was beheaded. That was incorrect. Uh, Andrew was not uh, beheaded. I was, making, I was thinking about uh, James, the brother of John, who was killed by the sword in Acts, the 12th chapter. Okay, that's recorded in scripture. Yeah, so I, I, I mentioned that as a side note, so I apologize for that. Um, anyway, um, where were we? 40. 40, okay. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. All right, so why are they beating them? Because they're telling them not to speak in the name of Jesus. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So, so we see right there that the apostles, even though they were beaten, they actually celebrated that fact, which is <laughs> pretty interesting, right? That, that they felt themselves worthy enough to suffer for the cause of Jesus, all right? But then that didn't deter them. They continued to teach daily in the temple, despite the fact that the government at this time, now keep in mind the government here is a little different than the government now. The government uh, for the Jewish people at this time, the religious leaders and the civic leaders were one and the same, okay? So the government, which was this this council of Sadducees and at least one Pharisee, Gamaliel, um, they told them, hey, don't you do this anymore. But, of course, they said, we're going to obey God rather than man. So they defied the, the law at that time and continued to preach Christ. All right? So, um, and I think there's something, a Bible verse about that, Matthew 10. Um, well, 
no, let me not go to Matthew. Let me, let's go to, we're going to have to dismiss. Let's go to Galatians 2, uh, Galatians 5. Galatians 5. We'll be back to your right. Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. And Galatians, you go to Ephesians, gone too far to your right. Galatians 5, 22. And then we're going to have to dismiss because we're out of time. Galatians 5, 22. Are we there? Yes. Okay, and some people will miss this. A lot of people, you're probably familiar with this passage, but sometimes you may miss a part of it. If you look here in Galatians 5.22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, right? We've all had Bible study on that before. But, but look what it says here. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And a lot of people miss this part. Against such, there is no law. So what is that telling us? God's Word is telling us that when it comes to showing love to your neighbor, when it comes to showing joy, peace, long-suffering towards your neighbor, gentleness, goodness towards your neighbor, faith towards your neighbor, when it comes to doing the fruits of the Spirit, there is no law. So if I love my neighbor enough to share the gospel, and the city of Carrollton says, you can't preach the gospel. You can't go door to door so when and yesterday we went door to door knocking doors, spreading the gospel. We did that yesterday. All right. Let's say the city of Carrollton passed an ordinance or a law that says you can't do that. This scripture says against such there is no law. That's what that means. Yeah. If you're doing the fruits of the spirit, there is no law against the fruits of the spirit. We're going out witnessing not because we hate people. We're going out and witnessing because we love people. We want peace with people. We're long-suffering towards people. We are gentle towards people. We want goodness towards people. We want meekness and temperance towards people. Against such, there is no law. It's good to know. Y'all see that? So we got to stand with God's word. God's word said, if you're doing what I want you to do, there is no law against it. But, but Lord, the city of Carrollton, the state of Texas, there is no law. It takes faith to do this. <laughs> there is no law. Is that okay? Yep. And so and that's what these apostles did in Acts, the fifth chapter, even though they were told uh, not to teach the, the doctrine of Christ. Uh, the bottom line is there is no law against that. All right? And we should remember that. Um, no matter where we are in, in the world, even though that there are Christians in other parts of the world who are being persecuted today. All right? We're going to have to dismiss. Do we have...